many of them said, I, I don't know what my purpose is. How, how do I even find my purpose? Like there was so much angst. There was a lot of anxiety and angst around what is my purpose? Am I living my purpose right now? You know, like in the, in the background of that is there's this idea of like, am I doing it right? Am I doing this right? <sighs> in which case, I just want to tell you, take a deep breath and relax because your purpose will find you. Ready to have a deeper conversation about body and soul, sacred leadership, and our collective evolution? Welcome to the Wise Body Ancient Soul Podcast with me, your host, Cherise Sisu. Relax. Your purpose will find you. So I'll never forget when, oh my gosh, it must be almost 10 years ago now, I was speaking to uh, a group of women entrepreneurs uh, at a conference and my talk ostensibly was on living your purpose. And it was, as it happened, it was at the end of the day. So I was there all day, just kind of walking around the room, schmoozing with people, getting to know. Uh, the women who would be in the audience. And so I asked them about this topic, you know, living their purpose. And I'll, um, what I'll even say before I dive into that is today's episode was inspired by a post um, by Simone Grace Soul. And the first, it's a carousel post and she waxes philosophic, but her very first, uh, Part just simply says, hi, let's thoroughly and mercilessly debunk the idea of a life purpose. But it got my wheels turning because it reminded me of this talk that I'd given. And before I even opened my mouth and said a word, you know, I'm, I'm going around the room and asking the women what, you know, what they thought, what their experience was, what their questions were. You know, I'm an improv artist since always. So I wanted to really speak to what was present in the room. And what I got was I had to toss my talk out because my talk kind of jumped off from the point of, here's my purpose. How do I live it? Yeah. And in hindsight, it's kind of funny because did I know all of my, I had so much yet to learn, but, and what really struck me was over and over again, what I heard from the women in the room was many of them, like decades, my senior, right? Many of them said, I, I don't know what my purpose is. How, how do I even find my purpose? Like there was so much angst. There was a lot of anxiety and angst around what is my purpose? Am I living my purpose right now? You know, like in the, in the background of that is there's this idea of like, am I doing it Right. Am I doing this right? <sighs> In which case, I just want to tell you, take a deep breath and relax because your purpose will find you. You don't even have to try. Like it's like this whole, all of that, you can just release all of that worry right now because guess what? You're already doing it. You've been guided to do it. Every experience uh, has been leading you to, to, to this place. So you don't even really need to worry about it. We don't even need to worry about the big picture. All we need to know is that next step, right? So how can I say this with so much a plum, right? Like, what do you mean? But, but we're supposed to live our life on purpose and well, supposed to, oh my gosh, that's heavy, right? It's a choice. It's always a choice. And we come in with many purposes. So this is the, for me, this is the first part of debunking a life's purpose. And it's not debunking the idea. I, I a hundred percent am purpose driven. I believe that we come in with not just one, but multiple purposes. That, that was something that I learned a little bit later on in my journey. Cause I had the same thing. I was like, and at the time when I was giving that talk, I was like, I am living my purpose. This is what I'm supposed to do, you know? And, um, like this kind of speaking and bringing in the movement. And it, I still do a lot of that stuff 
and it's shifted because we are constantly evolving. Our purpose is constantly evolving. And guess what? We have many, right? We have many. Like two of my primary purposes were to bring forward two amazing kids, right? And all the many events and intersections that happen in that relationship, right? It wasn't just like, oh, had the baby (laughs) and now I'm done, right? There's like a whole journey. There was like lessons shared, experiences shared, and, um, you know, all kinds of factors where multiple purposes are being touched through those core relationships, right? So first and foremost, relax around what is my purpose? Because guess what? You've got many, many. And, um, you know, there, there may be what I learned in a reading kind of like later on in my journey was, um, I was working with this wonderful, uh, psychic and teacher named Pat Rice. And, um, she does something what she calls like your soul journey or your soul plan, or I can't remember. It's a wonderful session, right? But it's a deep dive and she consults with your guides. She identifies your guides, talks about those and talks about not, and talks about not only some of your major life purposes, but who wants to help who amongst your ancestors wants to jump in and help with those. I know, right? Like, cool. (laughs) <laughs> what I found was in my session with her, like many of the ones that she identified were happening later in life for me. It actually, I felt a tremendous sigh of relief when she told me that because I was doing that same thing to myself of like, am I living my purpose? Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? What am I, what if I'm on the totally wrong path right now? <sighs> and then when she said, oh, you've got you know, this is going to happen around age 51. This one is happening all into my nineties. So that was kind of nice too. Like, Oh, I'm going to be around for a minute so I can relax. And also there's going to be help, you know, like a distant, you know, aunt on the, on the other side is helping me with my next bit, which I think is related to my book because she was a writer. Um, that's a whole other story in and of itself. But what I can say is you've got many purposes and so relax, right? Um, and, and there are, you know, it's like, there are no accidents. There's no, there's no doing it wrong. There's no doing it wrong. You are right. You're fine, right? That whole right, wrong thing that comes out of, you know, this paradigm that we live in. That's like, you know, that there's a, uh, like there, there, that there is this, um, binary or there is this, uh, like hierarchy of, um, you know, like you got to do it right. And if you're not doing it right, then you're wrong versus what if we're all right? What if we're all a little bit right? What if we're all a little bit wrong? Right. It's like really allowing for those multiple perspectives. So allow that in your own life. You came in with many contracts, uh, many goals, right? You know, that we forget. We come through that veil. Most of us forget, right? A few of us remember this stuff, you know, even after they're born. But most of us come through, we remember nothing. (laughs) We remember nothing of who we are and what we're here to do and blah, 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 blah. And don't worry, I'm not going to leave you high and dry. Um, you know, first I'm just debunking this whole thing about like, gotta find my life's purpose and am I doing it right? And then the second part, we're going to talk about what are those clues? What are those breadcrumbs that our soul leaves for us to, to hint, to let us know you're on the right path like this? Yes, this, yes, this more of this, right? You know, Ooh, this happened because yeah. Right. So I actually, I wanted to keep myself on subject today. So I made some notes for myself. What? I know. I, you know, I learned as a dancer first and I'm learning as a speaker, like, yes, I'm an improv artist and structure is good. (laughs) So that first point that I wanted to make was that it's plural, right? We have multiple life purposes 
And um, so you don't have to worry about finding that one, that one and only, right? Um, oh, cool. We talked about that. Um, here's the other bit too. We feel like our purpose has to be big, huge, like world transforming. And this too comes out of this hierarchical paradigm that we live in, right? The idea that one purpose would be bigger than another purpose. Like who's making that call, right? Who's making that judgment? I'm not. What comes to mind is that, that, um, that idea of like how a, a butterfly is like the, the waft of a butterfly's wing can start a tsunami, right? We very often do not know the impact that we have on the world around us, on the people around us, right? We take it for granted and we forget. And uh, it, it, so I want you to just like relax around this too, right? Is my purpose big enough? What? Like based on who? Based on what? Right? You know, like, like some of us will do stuff that impacts, you know, millions, right? Some of us may plant seeds that then impact millions, right? Some of us, you know, what will be in the here and now is I'm just making a difference in this one person's life, right? And, you know, like, okay, parenting comes to mind, right? That so-called humble <laughs> pursuit of parenting. We don't often think like, yes, life-changing purpose, yet it 100% is, right? Speaking as someone who had a challenging childhood, I often think about what would have been different had things been a little bit easier or, um, you know, had I felt um, loved, right? And you know, I know everyone was doing the best that they could, right? And like, so part of your purpose could simply be to create a loving environment for your child. How huge is that? It's enormous. Even though seemingly on the surface, oh, I'm just impacting one person, you know, plus not to mention, right? As a culture, we tend to um, again, hierarchize, hier hier hierarchize, yeah, that word. We tend to put into a hierarchy, um, you know, uh, well, everything for no reason whatsoever. Um, but there's also this idea of like, what has the greater impact? You know, what what is really going to have true and lasting impact? And um, that, my friends, is bigger than you or I can see. It just is right? We have no idea. Like there are things that we can see like, okay, I can see that, you know, I make this donation to this organization and it, it's able to do these things. I start this company, right? I speak to an audience of 500. Okay. Great example. I did a course. Um, oh my gosh, this is again, years ago called claim your feminine, right? It was about claiming your feminine power. And <laughs> Oh my God. I've learned so much since then because bless the women that came into that, um, the female identified people, right. That came into that program because I would, I just turned on the, it was a six week program and I just turned on the fire hose. They were just like, ah, you know, for six weeks. So I had, you know, like it's normal over it's, it's normal over a course for the, you know, like the, the biggest, um, showing to be in the beginning of the class. And then it kind of like tapers off. Right. But it definitely was happening in mind where it was like, like everyone showed up for the first class and then half for the second. And then by the end, it was like, you know, just a few people. Cause it was a lot of information. It was too much information crammed into that six week course. Um, really that first session was like, can we stretch this out to six weeks? That's, that's how, that's how intense it was. Right. So I led that course a few times. I'm a quick start. So I have a tendency to like shine, ooh, shiny. I like, I move on to the next project, right? This show actually is a really amazing challenge for me just to commit to delivering content, 
like regularly. Like it's, I'm learning, I'm learning discipline and commitment, y'all. Like, whoa, it's blowing my mind. And, um, but in that course, right, I had maybe, you know, I just offered it a few times, then moved on to something else because squirrel, right? And, um, you know, if anyone's interested in me bringing that back, it's a really good course. Um, maybe 20, 25 women went through it all together. So not a lot, right? You know, I was just getting started. I was still figuring things out. And um, you would, you might think, what, like, what was the impact of that? You know, right? And that's, that's literally the story I told myself. Oh, only this many people came, blah, 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 blah. This isn't working. Toss, come up with something new. Yes, I am also learning how not to do that. <laughs> but I go back, right? One of the ladies in that group, she came to me years later, years later, and confided, Sharice, you have no idea what that course meant to me. What I did not know was that she was in a, um, an abusive relationship, a marriage. And through the work that we did in that course, she learned to take her own desires seriously, her own pleasure, her own self, her own body. And she, she's like, Sharice, it helped me leave that relationship I mean, and the, the impact on her life was profound. Like since then she's, you know, like launched a different business, like it's grown and expanded. Just it's, it's, it's amazing. But that like, this is the kind of stuff, right? We never know. We never know. Here's another example. Way back uh, in my past uh, with my, my, my husband, my ex-husband, we owned a cafe together and um we also fought all the time <laughs> so in between customers sometimes it would get really really bad in there you know it was a small space it was a teeny little cafe it was adorable and um you know and i was so young and i just like we would just let loose at each other and I, I'll never forget, we were in the middle of just a drop everything, you know, like give it all you got match where we're just arguing back and forth, but rah, 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 like the atmosphere, like obviously there was no one in the cafe in that moment. And it, like the, oh, it was just like the air was just thick, thick with hostility and anger and hurt and sadness and, you know, just all of the feelings, right? And then, ding, 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 we hear the little bells ring as someone opens the door to come in. It was this young woman. And it just stopped us in our tracks. And she was like, are you guys open? And she had the most peaceful, sweet energy. It like immediately neutralized what was happening in the cafe. And we were just like, oh yeah, we're open. And we, you know, and it was like, and I always think of that moment. I was like, wow, she, I, I really, I feel like she was an angel because she has no idea, right? Or she probably, you know, she had any kind of spidey senses. She was probably like, what am I walking into? You know, like could feel the reverb in the air. Must have been an angel because she walked in anyway, right? Felt that reverb and was like, I can handle this, right? And walked in and dissipated all that conflict just by virtue of who she was and how she presented herself, right? So we never know. You never know. Never, never, never know. So do not underestimate your impact. It doesn't need to look like a big fat check or it doesn't have, a, have to have a lot of zeros behind it. None of that stuff, right? All of the stuff that we normally uh, have learned, I want to say normally, I'd say in this culture, right? That we've been taught of how we value what we do. 
right? That's why I circle back to the example of parenting or, or mothering, right? We take it so for granted, it's not valued, right? Not valued like, oh, being the CEO of a seven figure, whatever, you know? So all so important, all so important, you know? So there is no large or small. That is an illusion. Let it go. So, but, oh, but what, all I'm doing is blah, 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 blah. Right. I know I, I've done that with myself where I've been like, oh, but all I'm doing is X, right? That's usually my ego talking because I think I should be doing something bigger, more dramatic, more whatever. The other thing too, I, that I experience all the time is in our heads, we see, like we know, or we want, like, we want to be so much further along, like, right. But how do people see you right now? Right. It's like, yes, I've got my goal in my head, but already people are looking you at you as, as a leader, as a model, as an example, doing what you're doing right now. So that, um, I loved it because I was on a conversation with someone and they remind me of that word future pace, right? Where we're future pacing ourselves and we forget, we forget the value of what we're doing right now. We forget the value of what we did yesterday or a year ago. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Uh, thanks AI for thumbs up my, uh, my, my, my talk right now. I like, what's so funny is that little bauble never appears when I actually do a thumbs up. It like appears when I do some random hand gesture. <laughs> but anyway, so there's no large or small. You like the butterfly wing can have tremendous impact just with the energy that you're putting out in the world, which is why it's so it, energy is everything. It's the most important thing that we can cultivate and take care of, right? And just let go of, of judging where you are right now. Just let that go, right? It's like the opposite of what creator wants us to do. It's the opposite of what our inner knowing, our soul, our, like, if we want to think of it as higher, I don't like it calling, I don't like calling it my higher self, but that part of myself that's tuned in to all that is, that's fully sourced, right? That's connected with universe, whatever your name for it is, that part of myself knows that I'm exactly on the right path, that I, there's no accidents where I, where and how I ended up here. And just to relax, you know, it's not to say like not to have goals, not to want more. That's all a given. That is all a given. I just want us to stop agonizing over, am I living my purpose? Am I doing the right thing? Right? Because guess what you are. And if you're not, you'll know pretty darn soon, right? Like, hello, how many not so great decisions have we made? Many, many, many and we'll make many more, right? And we get so in our heads about making those choices or taking those steps because we want to do it right. And here's the thing, you the the best way to know, right? If you don't have if you're like you don't have that strong intuition or let's say you doubt for it and you get a strong yes or no, right? Like let's say you don't have that and you're like, "Ah, it's kind of in the middle. I'm getting like a meh," right? Do it. You will find out soon enough whether it's a good fit or not, right? <laughs> it's like going on that second date and you're like, yeah, I had, a, yeah, I kind of knew. I kind of knew, <laughs> right? But sometimes we need to go on the second date to be like, oh, right. My intuition was talking to me and I was just kind of trying to override it because they were cute. <laughs> All right. Third, you don't need to see all the way down the path, right? So um, Dr. Martin Luther King has a famous, um, famous saying, faith, right? Which is key, key to all of this, right? Faith is taking the first step, even when you don't see the whole staircase, what I would add to that is you don't necessarily want to see the whole staircase, right? B 
Because if you were to see all the way, let's see like you saw that timeline all the way through and where you're going to end up. It might be a little bit like, it might be a little overwhelming, right? Like um, Oprah uh, Winfrey shares how um, when she she was um, talking to a medium, I want to say it was John Edward, a very famous medium. And she shared an experience of the first time that she had a medium on her uh, show. And it was way before she was in Chicago. I want to say she had a little show in Philly, somewhere, um, East Coast-ish. And um, literally, like her audience was like 700 people. And this this medium took her aside after the episode and was like, you are going to reach millions you are going to, you are going to be able to like, with a snap of a finger, be able to talk to anyone on the planet. Like they will want to talk to you. And she just, you know, and she was like, she just kind of looked at this lady like, uh, I mean, that's great. Like I would really love that. And, uh, but looking out at that, you know, audience of 700 people, she was like, I don't see how that's, I have no idea how that's happening right? So she could have gotten stuck on like, whoa, I see, you know, I've I've been given a glimpse up the staircase, right? What happens? Sometimes we get frozen, paralyzed by that, like knowing, oh my gosh, that's where I want to be, right? Or that's where I see myself. But what are all those many steps? Relax. All you need to focus on is that very next step. That's all you need to focus on. Cause it's super, at least for me, super overwhelming to think about like, brrr, like all the myriad things that need to happen to line up. Right. You know, cause we know nothing happens overnight. She didn't get to that place that that medium described for years and years and years. So following your purpose is just about your next step. So relax. Your purpose will find you. So you're like, that's all well and good, Therese. But how is your purpose finding you? You know, our soul's purposes, right? Which I lump that in with the contracts that we make with other souls before we come in here, whether they're our family, our friends, um, sometimes even contracts, sometimes often contracts with people who will hurt us deeply in this lifetime. But we made a contract, we made a pact, we had an agreement before we came in. Like, Ooh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to play this role in your life. You're not going to like it, but you said you really wanted to learn about forgiveness, right? We forget about all that. We get here and we're like, Oh my God, that person hurt me so bad. Like, er, I'm going to carry a resentment and a grudge for a long time. Oh my gosh. I just recorded. It won't be out for a little bit, but I just recorded the interview with the Oponopono teacher and talking about that. Woo. So amazing, just um, how key it is, like how forgiveness is really about us and like letting things go. But that's a big lesson to learn, right? And how do you learn forgiveness? By practicing it. Yeesh. And how do you get opportunities to practice it when not so nice stuff happens, the not easy stuff, the hard stuff? right? And it's, it's moving through that, but here's a breadcrumb, right? This is a breadcrumb. This is a clue from your soul. If you're wondering like, what am I here for? What, you know, what, what is my purpose? What are my purposes or porpoises? If you're, you know, like a marine biologist, what are my purposes? Um, here's a clue. What have been those experiences that have shaped you, that have made you who you are, right? So I actually, I rarely talk about it, but my book, (laughs) Shameless, Unleash Your Message, Impact and Power, right? I dive into this in a chapter. So Shameless is, it's a spiritual and personal growth book disguised as a marketing book. And it's like, it was me taking what I learned as a belly dancer and putting it together, what I learned as a copywriter. And when you are in your body and 
like, and then bring that to um, your marketing, your message, your, you know, your creativity. It is, uh, it's amazing what happens, right? So I, there's a whole chapter that I talk about, you know, so in marketing, right, we talk about our, your unique value proposition, right? Let's translate it in spiritual terms. Who are you and why are you here? Right? What makes you different from every one of the billions of souls on the planet? Right? What makes you different from any other incarnation, anyone who's ever lived? There's been no one like you, no one ever, right? And never will be again. And even in over the course of our lifetime, we change over the course of our lifetime, right? So I take uh, the readers through a process. Um, I call it bragging your brilliance. Of course, first we have a little discussion on get over the word bragging. <laughs> But it's really about uh, what what makes you different, what makes you special. P.S. It's no accident, right? What makes you different from all the rest is no accident. Is it is like a hundred percent tied in to one or more of the reasons why you're here. You know, and maybe it's easier to think about it that way. Purpose is such a big word, isn't it? Like, what are the reasons why I'm here? What are what are the reasons? You know, what it is? What is it that I'm to accomplish? Right. So part of it is looking back over your experiences. Right. I can say, like I was saying, you know, to the the lovely uh, Pihana Lani, like the, her. Um, the Ho'oponopono teacher, I was like, I feel like my lifetime, this lifetime has been like me getting a PhD in forgiveness. <laughs> right. So, so like, what are some of those themes in your own life? And it doesn't always, it doesn't have to just be your struggle. Yes. That can hold a clue, but it doesn't have to be right. Although how you emerged from how you overcame, how you survived, how you flourished, how you thrived, right? There are all clues there because we each carry a piece of the medicine. We each carry a piece of what we all need to truly flourish here. So yeah, what makes you different is important, is really important. So I, I give a, a number of prompts that you can use to kind of like get the, get the wheels flowing, right? So there are those themes of our experiences. <gasps> what comes easy to you? What some might even go as far as saying, you know, like what I've come to identify, there are certain skill sets that I just came in with. Pay attention to those. These are the things that you do that are so natural to you that you don't even realize that you're doing them. And if it's kind of tough for you to to think of those things, ask the people who know and love you. Like, okay, what do you love about me? <laughs> or when you think of me, you think of blank, right? Um, what do you think I'm really good at? Right. If it's if like start with your own musings, and these are powerful questions to like take out to your inner circle, you know? Um yeah, the stuff that is easy for you, the stuff that came easy to you that you learned very quickly and easily, there are clues there, clues to your purpose or purposes, right? Um, what lights you up? What, it, this is like, you can feel how it's entwined with like what's easy for you, right? Because what's easy for us is often the stuff that we could do all day and go to bed and get up and do it again the next day and just be like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, just feel like we could keep drawing from that well, right? That's not to say, you know, like you may be an amazing speaker who's also an introvert who also needs to recharge, right? Before going back out there. Like I'm an extroverted introvert. I get, I'm not, all those names befuddle me a little bit. But what I do know is that I do need to tend 
to my own space. I love, I love speaking. I love this. Like, I love being in front of a mic. If you couldn't already tell that, right? I love being in front of a camera, even though, do I always feel camera ready? No, no, not at all. Right. Do I go like, oh, you know, oh, I don't feel like it. You know, of course. And yet when I get in the flow, when I'm just, when I'm just doing it, even, even when, you know, my ego throws up a little, um, a little resistance or a little like, you know, whatever, um, I'm like, ah, yeah, this is what I'm supposed to do. Like me, I, I spoke at, um, I spoke for the first time at the Dowsers conference, uh, the American society of Dowsers. Uh, their annual conference. This year it'll be their 64th. Can you believe that? It's like the longest running conference of its kind or something like that. Um, but I spoke there. I was I I attended the year before and then last year um I pitched a presentation and a workshop and I got both. And I it was like when I when I gave my talk, it was standing room only. And I was like, I was Hi. Like I was just like, oh, you know, and it's so funny. I laugh and my my best friends laugh at me because of course I walk out of there and I'm like, oh my God, this is what I meant to do. And they're like, Sharice, you say that literally every time you speak. <laughs> like, oh really? Am I am I repeating myself a little bit? But so what is that thing for you, right? You know, dancing is another thing like that for me. We're like, oh, when I dance, I'm just like, I feel so in my body. I feel so grounded. I feel so connected. What is that for you? Is it cooking a beautiful meal? Is it walking amongst the trees, right? Is it like just getting your hands in the ground when you're gardening? Like, is it is it raising your beautiful kids? Is it like taking exquisite care of your fur babies, right? Like all of these things, all of these things, like really look at the sparkling jewels of all that you already contribute to the world and to the people around you. There are those clues right there, right? And they really are jewels. Like, I see you. I see you and the sparkling, like, concentric circles of ripples around you. Like, we are so powerful. I am so much more powerful than I give myself credit for. You are so much more powerful than you give yourself credit for. We we do this to ourselves. It's part of, you know, part of this paradigm, part of this overculture that we were, you know, co-created and were born into and are now hopefully dismantling. (laughs) Not just hopefully, I feel like that turning point has already, it's, it's, it's coming apart at the seams. So these are all clues, right? Like what fills you up? What makes you happy? Right. And just as a bonus, I'm going to read this page from Shameless of some fun journaling journaling prompts. Um, Some of these are going to sound more businessy than others, right? And that might fit just right, you know, if you are an entrepreneur or, uh, you know, an executive. Okay. My team works hard for me because, like, what do they love about you? Why are they loyal to you? If I learned anything growing up, it's that. Mm, Right? What did you learn growing up? Ooh, if I learned anything as a insert role here, like if I learned anything as a mother, if I learned anything as a best friend, if I like you can fill that in with anything. If I learned anything as a sister, if I learned anything as a daughter, you know, if I learned anything as a college student. And it, and the list goes on. If I learned anything as a, you know, a student of the French language, whatever, like fill it in with all those, you know, you could even, you know, what'd be fun is just do like a journaling where you're like, I'm this and that and this, like, just kind of like list all the different roles that you play throughout the day or just like in your life, peacemaker, you know, uh, hit like lost object finder, you might be a dowser, (laughs) Uh, you know, like whatever that is, speaker, author, writer, artist, dancer, you know, great friend, confidant. Yeah. There's so many, you know, so many things. Something that people say about me is that they feel calmed 
They feel calmed by my voice and by my presence. They feel good just being around me, right? This could be one of your skill sets or talents as well, right? What I could do all day gladly with ease is dot, dot, dot. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Right? We talked about that a little bit. The thing I love to do more than anything is just pick one of these and like run with it. My peer, oh, I love this. This one is more corporate sounding. My peers recognize me for, right? This is same thing like I was saying, like ask the people around you. What do they recognize in you? What do they see in you as your strengths, as the skills you bring to the table? My favorite thing to do is, right? This is the other thing too, like total side note. No one said that your purpose has to be your work right? First of all, we've got many, many purposes. Not all of them are going to be related to your work, right? And sometimes it might be that your work allows you the space to do your purpose, right? Like, so just, you know, I just want to unhook that as well, right? And I think that's part of what Simone um, uh, Soul was talking about in her post as well, is just like, let's unhook it from these like capitalist structures and just, you know, really think about like, how are we interpreting this word? How do we want it to feature in our lives? And is it creating a lot of um, angst or undue pressure for like no reason at all? What sets me apart from others in my field is that I fill in the blank. This is like a choose your own adventure, isn't it? I am proud of myself for Mm. I am most proud of the way I dot, dot, dot. Proud's a good word, right? It's nice. Like, what would you pat yourself on the back for? A great practice, a great practice, you know, in addition to like gratitudes is like, what am I proud of myself for today? Right? What's the, what's the one thing or the three things or the one thing, right? Sometimes it's like, oh, I got nothing done. There's always something. I'm proud of myself for hydrating today, right? I'm proud of myself for actually getting out of bed when I didn't feel like it, right? Or whatever it is for you, right? Mm, my top three achievements are, this is more of like, you know, if you're actually putting together some kind of marketing document, but even just, it's, it's kind of a fun exercise, isn't it? Like, because it's going to change over time what we think our top three accomplishments are. And it might be like, and you know what I would say is like narrow it down, right? My top three accomplishments as a dancer are blah, 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 right? Or were or whatever. Um, my top three accomplishments as a mom, right? Might be your three kids, right? <laughs> so those are just some like journal prompts um, that can just, just see, just see what emerges as you think about, um, each of those things. And let me know, like, what did you learn? And did this help? Did this help relax? I hope just around, you know, don't worry about figuring it out. Like we're not always going to know all of the things all of the time. There is always mystery. And that is beautiful. Allow the mystery, right? Uh, allow ourselves to just know, you know what, what I know the very, what feels in my heart, like the very next thing, the next right thing to do is this. And for me today, it was recording this episode. <laughs> I'll be honest. I was like really on the brink of Oh, I don't feel like it. Oh my God, I'm confessing to you. But yes, um, I was kind of dragging my heels and I was like, you know what? I've got plenty of interviews in the hopper, right? And because I'm doing this, I don't know if you've noticed, I do like a solo episode and then an interview every Thursday, right? Solo interview, solo interview. And I just alternate. And, um, and I was like, you know what? Let me just, I'll just edit one of the interviews, which is amazing, right? They're all amazing. And, um, and then as I was driving my guides, my intuition were like, what about that post that you saw? Like it kind of, 
got some wheels rolling for you. You could talk about this. You could talk about that. You could talk about this. I was like, all right, all right. Okay. Okay. Right. And, um, so voila, right. Um, just leaning into it, leaning into those little messages, leaning into those little nudges. That's all we have to do. And, um, yeah, be easy on yourself. Be easy on yourself. There's, there's enough making things difficult. There's enough making things stressful, right? The, and more often than not, we make things stressful for ourselves. You know, I can't tell you how many times a week I kind of have to step back when I'm feeling stressed out and I have to step back and go, whose expectations are these? Like who's putting all this pressure on you? And usually it's me, right? I've made a decision that it's got to look a certain way uh, or I've got to deliver in a certain timeline and da, 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 and it must include X, Y, and Z and blah, 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 right? What if it doesn't? What if that is an assumption or an expectation I'm putting on myself? So same thing goes with our many purposes, you know, relax around the expectations of what it should look like because most likely you don't even know what it's going to look like. I don't know when I had that session with Pat Rice and she's like, she, you know, she can't tell me what those purposes are. Right. Um, all she was able to tell me was these are the ages, right? She uses a combination of like connecting with her guides, my guides, and, um, her version of dowsing, which is like body dowsing and, um, you know, tapping into her, uh, uh, like I can't, I can't remember if she does like a muscle test or something like that to kind of get to like at what age. Right. And, um, do I know what it's going to look like? No. Am I glad that you're on this ride with me? Yes. Thank you for being on the planet with me right now. It's an exciting time to be here, isn't it? <laughs> so I hope this episode brings you a little bit of peace a little bit of ease and, you know, maybe a sense of humor about the whole thing, because it's like, like when we like, I know what my purpose is. It's really like, we're like this. We only know part of the story. You know, I just put my hand over one of my eyes for those of you that are listening. It's like, we only can see part of the story at any given time, right? Don't we have like 2020 hindsight where we go back and we go, oh, that's why that happened. Oh my goodness. That's why I met that person there. I didn't even know, but that planted the seeds for this conversation that I had five years later, right? Or we connected then so that we could do this luscious thing now. We don't know. We don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so with that... Um, take it easy and just allow the next step to be revealed to you from my heart to yours. I love you. Take what you need and pass it on. Thanks for joining me on wise body, ancient soul. I hope it reminds you how magical and powerful you truly are. Kindly subscribe, rate, and review this podcast so more juicy light bringers like you can hear these transmissions. And if you're looking to connect more deeply with your body and soul's wisdom, visit sharicesu.com to learn how else we can play together. Here's to your joy and wild success. From my heart to yours, I love you. Take what you need and pass it on. Thank you.